Our next speaker has spoken to audiences as big as 20,000 and as diverse as from those from 140 countries. He's a renowned next level leadership readiness expert, management consultant, and best selling author with more than 20 years of leadership experience with major multinational companies around the world. He holds, he holds an MBA from Imperial College London, is the CEO of Thought Expressions. He's coached C level executives, bureaucrats, celebrities, UN diplomats, and entrepreneurs and professionals. In 2012, he was among the top 25 stand-up comedians at the International Comedy Festival in Hong Kong. In 2017, he was in Vancouver and competed against 35,000 contestants from 142 countries, and he won, crowning himself the world champion of public speaking, ladies and gentlemen. He is a father of two and a husband of one. He's made that very clear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Manoj Vasudevan. Yesterday, I was here, I came here to check the venue and that's when the first time I saw the convention agenda and I was shocked. I saw that I had to speak right after lunch. So I was very furious. I called Frederick and said, Hey buddy, why did you make me speak right after lunch? He said, why not? I said, you know, they will eat a lot and they will be sleepy. And you want me to speak? He said, Manoj, I can't believe it. Everybody wanted this slot and I reserved it for you. <laughs> then I said, why? Why did you reserve for me? He said, you know, Manoj, I've seen all your speeches. You have this amazing ability to make your audience sleep better. <laughs> you see, <laughs> truth be told, I was not born to be a speaker. I never planned to become a professional speaker. I call myself an accidental professional speaker. I used to speak for passion with a purpose and I never thought about making professional speaking a profit-making tool. Until one day, something happened. It was in 2011, I was invited to speak at a community center in Singapore for one hour for free. And I remember preparing for weeks and practicing for hours. And on that day, on a Saturday afternoon, I was at home all dressed up and stressed up. And I was about to leave the home. My six-year-old son comes running to me and said, Daddy, play with me. I said, not now, not now. I'm going, I said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to speak. Oh. Daddy, how much are they paying you? I said, nothing. Are you crazy? If you work, they have to pay you. So as I left home in Mayor Road and I drove all the way to the middle of Singapore in Topayo, what he said started running in the back of my mind. And I actually started to feel stupid. Why am I spending all these hours on a one-hour speech? And during my presentation, I just happened to mention about what my son told me that day. And as, I, as soon as I said that, a guy sitting in the back of the room, he stood up and left the room. And as I finished my speech, he reappeared again and came over to me and handed over to me an envelope. And I opened the envelope. Inside that was what looked like a check. I took it out and it was a shopping voucher for $20. <laughs> I think Cohen, Tone, Cohen Tan was there at that day, right? Was, were you there? Yes, Cohen? Yes, I remember seeing you there. So that's the proof. So I went home that day and opened my laptop and updated my profile. I added two words, professional speaker. <laughs> After all, I got paid, okay? This proof. Fast forward to last year, I was speaking, I went to Dubai for the very first time in my life, and I was invited to speak for 90 minutes, and I'm the only speaker for that event. And it was at the Emirates headquarters. 
a big auditorium filled to the brim with 700 people. 99% people in the room, I have never met them before. After that, they drive me to Abu Dhabi in another auditorium filled with 300 people. Again, 99% of people in the room I have never met before. And after my speech, a businessman, he takes me to the side and say, Manoj, I want to offer you the role of CEO of one of our companies. I said, I'm not looking for work. He said, we are connected to the government. We are running big projects. And uh, we have a great team. Everything is in line. But we need a leader like you. I said, you don't understand. I'm a professional speaker. He said, you, we can pay you $3 million. The, he was a big shot and the offer was real. The question is, what would you say? Would you say yes or would you say no? Raise your hand if you would say no. Raise your hand if you would say yes. I knew, knew about that. So, dear APSS members, I really did think about you. So, I looked at him and said, you know what? I know someone in Singapore who is better than me. My wife. <laughs> now, it is not about the offer. The real question was, what was running in my mind, what did I do in that 90-minute session that made a smart gentleman at least consider that I might be the person for what he's looking for. That is the power of speaking. You never know who is sitting in your audience. So today I'm going to share with you seven things that works for me to get hired, rehired, and referred. And since the time is on short supply, I'm going to run through these points. If you have any questions, you can ask me during the break or email me. I'm leaving after the break. Tomorrow I'm not here. I'm speaking at another event. So let's get cracking. Number one, your keynote is your key. Most people, I, I do, do truly believe you need to have a killer world-class keynote. Most people start, when they start speaking or in the game, they start investing in SEO, infusions of this. And, but how much time do we really spend on that keynote? I believe we all need a killer, at least one killer keynote. And don't take shortcuts on this one. The short road is the dead end. The short road is the dead end. So what do you need in your keynote that gets you hired, rehired, and referred? I believe there are four things. Number one on the list, of course, as I said before, you need to have a 40-minute professional keynote that someone can book you to speak. And then the next one, there are four big things your keynote need to address. Number one, you need to know your funda. What I mean by funda, I'll explain in one minute. It's about the objective for your keynote. Number two, you need to get on stage. You need to speak more often. How do I get so many people to turn? By the way, the event in Dubai was a public event. Anybody in the public could attend. How do I get more people to attend my events? I'll share it in a few minutes. Of course, as you speak, you need to build your authority and credibility. You need to show that you are the authority for your topic. How do you do that? We'll go through that in a couple of minutes. Then, of course, as you speak, you need to engage your audience. So what do you mean by engage your audience? So I will invite you to challenge what that means. We want to rethink what that really means. So once you have all these four things in place, that's what leads you to have more power, more profit, or you further your purpose, or your prestige, whatever you are after, what is the objective to get that speech, of that speech? So, what is your funda? A lot of speakers here who come to me to review their speeches, the number one question I ask is, what is your funda? So these are the fundamentals of your speech. So, somebody laugh for that. I think that is a very common line in India, I think. Is that right? Is that right? Okay. So, what is your funda? So after listening to your speech, 
what do you want your audience to feel what do you want the audience to what is the emotional state you will leave them behind so you started off as, as sleepy you will end up snoring or whatever that is right so you need to decide what's the end state you want to leave them with the next one is what do you want the audience to unveil what are the aha moments you can provide in your speech this is the reason why speakers like simon sinek can sell more books and get speak get get paid to speak for $125,000 because he spends a lot of time on the unveil part. What will he reveal? The new things you can learn. Because people are always trying to learn new things. How much do you focus on that? And then after listening to your speech, what do you want your audience to notice? What will you do to make them rem remember about their context and challenges? So that's the fun part of the funda. The next one, after listening to your speech, what do you want the audience to do? What's the next step you want them to take? And just because you ask them to take a next step, do you think they will take it? No, they will not take it unless it's clear to them what will they achieve. So here is what I do. I have a card called the Funda card, for lack of a better name. So I print it out, I fill it up, I keep it right in front of me as I write my keynote. Today is not a keynote, it's a sharing, but on a typical keynote, I will only say or do things that's aligned with furthering the funda. Of course, you can download this for free at www.thekeynoteacademy.com. And when you apply, I'm going to capture your email and send you emails for the rest of your life. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you, you, you don't have to give the email. Okay, I'm just kidding. You, you can just go there. I don't need your email. Go there, and there's a link called Resources for Speakers, and you can click and download. So keep it in front of you. And this is, this is backed by neuroscience. I can give a keynote on why this works, how our brain receives and processes information. OK, next one. Demonstrate your authority. What part of your speech do you show that you are an authority or the go-to person for your subject? I speak on a variety of topics. Next level leadership readiness. I speak on public speaking, diversity, collaboration, a few things. But next level leadership readiness is my catchword, thanks to my coach, Brenda. And uh, that's my, my, my positioning, next level leadership readiness. So, but when I'm doing, like, imagine I'm doing public speaking. Let's say in front of a thousand people, what I will do, one of the things I could do is I'll ask them, who is afraid of speaking in public? I will pick the person who is most terrified, who's like sh literally shivering, and I will say, if you come on stage, I will cure your fear. And I will pick only those people who are really really scared. So in this case, this lady with the mic, she wanted to come on stage, but she was so scared, the other lady has to accompany her to, to the stage. And when the other lady came on stage, I told her, since you are here, you will also speak. And she started shivering. <laughs> so what I do is I do a two-minute live coaching and then invite the audience to ask them anything. And 100% of the time, they will speak. So what did I do? Did I plan the person? Did I use NLP? No, I didn't do. Frederick Heron tells me, Manoj, you have this gift of unlocking people to see their greatness. There's another speaker in the US, John Register says, uh, Ron is saying, oh, you have it. <laughs> and, uh, but the, there's another guy in the US, John Register, he says, that man, that's your superpower. Honestly speaking, I do not think so. I think this is the result of me spending more than 10 years studying my topic. Very few people go through the depths of your topic and study. We always run through different directions. So that's what I think. So what can you do to demonstrate your authority on your topic? How can you spend five minutes in your keynote to show that you are the best person on that topic? Now, for me, if I speak on leadership or on diversity, I do not bring people up on stage. Maybe I'll do something else to demonstrate that. But think about this. What, what part of your speech shows this? Very important point, do not build yourself up. When I call these people on stage, I'll never take credit for their success. I will credit them for making the step to come on the stage, and I will tell them about the process I took years to master. You don't want to build yourself up. You can get carried away with this thing on stage. Now, going to the next one, rethink engagement. What do you mean by engagement? What is engagement? 
lot of times speakers, even the uh, keynote academy, they come to me and say, oh, Manoj, I want to be more humorous. I want to tell stories. I want to interact with the audience. I think all these things are important. Humor is important. Storytelling is important. Interaction is important. But I, what I like to invite you to think is to rethink what engagement means. For me, the real engagement means that the audience, as they listen to you, are thinking about their lives, their context. They're not thinking about how great you are. They're thinking about what, how can they implement. And once you do that, you are entering the realm of their lives. You're entering their mind. Your name gets etched in their memories, and that's why they will rehire you or refer you. So that's a way of rethinking. So how do I know it really worked? How do I know that I really engaged them? How do I know I really connected with them? One way to do is ask to get feedback. Of course, you also can look at social media. This is what typically speakers do. I got a standing ovation. I also do that sometimes. That's <laughs> But oh, what, what are people talking about the event? Sitting ovation, but nobody's ovation, no, no clapping, okay? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, pretty lady looking at me. Good. People queuing up for selfie. People taking photographs. While all these is good, what I am really looking for is different. It's my benchmark for success. What I'm looking forward to see is, I do not want to sound special. I want them to believe that I am similar to them. And if, and they can be better than me, if only they will follow my process. So I'm looking for people to say, I tell you, so they just show you some samples. Till he's like you and me. I'll put your lessons to practice and shoot for the moon. People talking about my processes and formulas. So this is the point I want to take you. Don't follow me, follow the process. So a lot of times we try to build ourselves up, and in that process we, I think that's a, I think that's a road that can't, you can't go very far with. So you also need them to look at the process. Why? Because they're not here to listen to how great you are or your journey. They are finding, you paid all this money to come to this convention, also to know what can you do to apply in your life. So what the audience is looking for, forward to is a plan. They're looking at you as a guide who can give them a plan, a process, so that they can implement and replicate your success. So think about it. What, what do you do when it comes to speaking on your topic? And this is very important. Even when I look at, put up testimonials on my website, I tend to put those testimonials that praise my process. For example, Marshall Goldsmith was kind enough to endorse my book, but he doesn't say, he says the mousetrap way will teach you what is to be a great leader and how to get there. He doesn't say Manoj Vasudevan will teach you. Two different things. People want to know something. So this is how I look at it. So I just invite you, this is what works for me. Now, looking at the keynote revenue model, the, we talk, spoke about the keynote, all the uh, components, or the strategic position, strategic things you need in your keynote. But what about the result of that? What you are after? Power, profit, purpose, prestige, what are you after? So that leads me to the next point. I didn't want to talk about this. Two people asked me to speak about this. One was Ron Kaufman, another was Frederick Heron, two people I held in high esteem. They want me to speak about that. I'm, so I'm, I never share about this thing. Okay, the thing is to know your purpose. Why are you speaking? You see, I left a high paying consulting career and jumped into speaking for many reasons. But one of the reasons was when I used to do consulting and I used to look around the world, I used to see in organizations, in politics, in society, there are a lot of people who are very competent. Very competent, but they have no confidence. They can't take credit for their work. They can't grow. They get stuck. But on the other side, there are a lot of competent, incompetent people. Sorry to say, but there are a lot of incompetent people who show all the confidence. And they become the influencers and direct the direction of the organization or society or even politics. So uh, that, uh, that I used to get intrigued by this situation. So I used to think a lot about this. At un one point, I used to think, what if I can equip 
and enable enough people to have more confidence, to take lead on social causes so that they can operate without the attention or support of their governments. So at some point, I came up with this idea of helping 20 million people to overcome their fear of public speaking or to take the leadership to the next level and all sort of things around that one topic of empowering people. I had no clue what to do at that time. That was my vision. But of course, when I started sharing with people, some people laughed at it, some people supported it, some people started copying it and started saying, I will help 100 million people, I will help 5 billion people. I'll... So, but I also had my doubts, how will I lead with that? One of the things I started doing was, why don't I pick few people and see whether I can coach them? So I pick people on three criteria. People who are interested, committed, and have their heart in the right place. So I started picking some people. So for example, one, one guy I picked up for that, he was terrified of public speaking. He can't speak to anyone outside his circle of friends and family. He, will, he can't even, even, if you put him in a group, he can't even stand up to tell his name. Why? Because he was born with a congenital condition which makes him look different and speak different. But when I spoke to him, I was very inspired by him because he said, even though he had this morbid fear of public speaking, he said, Manoj, what I want to do is I want to be a global professional speaker. I said, you have a fear of public speaking, but this is like totally contradict because very driven. I said, why? Because I, he said, I want to let my, the world know to move away from negativity. I want to live and don't get affected by other people's opinion. So he was very motivated. Today, he speaks in front of 5,000 people or more. If you look at his Facebook, some of his videos have more than 2 million views. Sometimes I myself get viral videos that are circulating, it comes to my WhatsApp, and I feel very proud of him. His name is Hidesh Ramchandani. Raise your hand if you've seen him. A lot of people have seen him. Yeah, he has spoken at our convention two years ago. But he is very successful, he is very influential. He's speaking in the world, he's getting paid for, and his goal to help 50 million people to lead better than normal lives. I asked him, so you are a professional speaker, you are, you are busier than me, your schedule is full. So what is your next goal? He said, Manoj, I don't want to be a speaker, I don't want to be an influencer, I want to be an icon. One day my impact will be so big that they will make movies about me. So Hidesh is driven by a purpose. That's what gets him to speak more and more. There is a lady who doesn't want to be identified, who is, lives in the Middle East. Her purpose is to break through to the higher level. So she, there are leadership councils filled with men. He, she wants women to break in and be represented and make their voice heard. She was part of our, one of our programs, which is called Her Own Voice, to help women to speak when their voice matters the most. Now she helps others to follow that. So she speaks for a purpose. I have a reason for sharing this. With one more example, I'll tell you why. There's another guy I was coaching. He's a, he's a very senior leader in a large multinational company. During my first session, he tells me, Manoj, I honestly, I don't want this coaching. I do not want to be in my C-level suite. What I really want to do is I want to go to the remotest villages in India filled with gangsters, criminals, and corrupt politicians. I want to go to those schools there, and I want to tell those children, do not make these guys your role models. You have a better future if you, be, if you stick to your values. And he gets threats to his life for doing that. So he takes time off from work, spends weeks in these places. And sometimes he comes to my office with piles of papers, handwritten letters from those children who tell him, and they, or this is what they write. They said, thanks for coming, thanks for showing us our way. We never, never seen this before, and thanks for coming all the way to show us the way. I promise I will be different. 
So these people are driven by purpose. My point is this, what I have noticed is, speakers with a purpose speak at a different frequency. They speak at a different frequency, they connect better. They are very passionate, they, they, they drives them. And so think about it. I'm not force you to think, but I just suggest that you consider what is your purpose of speaking? What's your true purpose for speaking? It's not about going with the flow, going with the trend, it's all fine, but I'm just, just, I'm not going to force my view on you, but my suggestion is to think about what is your purpose. So what I have, what, how it has helped me is once that is clear for me, everything I do, every book I write, every speech I do, every event I do is aligned with my purpose. So it doesn't look like a lot of hard work, but of course there's a lot of hard work, but I think I'm moving, getting somewhere. Ajit Puru somewhere as why, why, why are you working so hard? But this is something that drives me as well. Of course, I also run free online programs, Nervous to Fabulous, to help those people who afford the programs to actually at least learn basic skills in getting better. Of course, I also do programs. So I have some people in this room, a couple of them, Yana, who, when I talk to her, she's not driven by money. She wants to make a change, to be change makers. So this is another guy, Darren, is he here? Darren, uh, Darren Brandon. Darren Brandon, I asked him, why do you want to speak? He said, Manoj, I don't want money, I want to make a difference. But his topic is so powerful, he was in the Falkland Wars, after all the way his experience is so broad, I think you will make tons of money, but focus on your purpose. It's just a suggestion. So how, and what, what is the reason a lot of people come to my events? There are a lot of reasons, but one reason I found out which really touched me was I found out a lot of speakers I have coached, they, when they go around the world speaking, they mention my name. So a lot of times their followers are the ones who are filling my room. So I think it's also, it also indirectly benefits me in a way. So I invite you to think, what is, what, what is the focus, income or impact, or both? It's your choice. So I suggest you to think, millionaires and million s, right? So that is millionaires, money and followers. Think about it. So my, I initially said millionaires or, then I said it can be both. It can be, you can have both income and you can have impact. So now I still remember the first time I came for an APSS convention. It was in 2013. Nobody knew me in this room. Only two people knew me. One of them was my previous coaching client. He actually took me to the friend of the room, right in front. When I, I walked him, he said, come here. He took me to the friend, asked me, look at the stage, and he said, within two years, they are going to invite you to speak here. And since then, I've been invited to speak to a, for APSS three times. Thank you. That person, thank you. And that person was Avil Ryan. Oh, yeah. And those days, I used to have a million hair. And if you look closely, you'll also see Frederick Heron in this picture. Right? Do you see him? Ron Kaufman was running a highly energetic session as usual. And he ran an activity. He probably forgot. He ran an activity. And I paired up with Frederick for that activity. And during that activity, I got to know him better. And that year, I proposed that he pro filled up a nomination form to, for him to be APSS president. That didn't go through that time. But I'm very happy that I'm speaking at a convention where he is organizing it. Amazing convention. Give me a round of applause. And he's also a great friend. That's why he gave me this slot <laughs> after lunch. <laughs> and this is the thing. Ron Kaufman is still my role model, and today he also mentors my wife. She's not an APS member, by the way. So that's free coaching. <laughs> so Avi is still making deals for APS and selling dreams. Here is my point. Be human, add value. Add value to each other, add value to the community. So that is what works for me. What works for you? 
what help do you need to succeed? Look around the room. I think everything you need to be the top of the world of professional speaking is available in this room. Look up, look around. Speak up. Ask for help. I think, and I all definitely wish that your stages get bigger and bigger and bigger, and one day you will be speaking in a big auditorium or an arena with more than 20,000 people, all in the room just to listen to you. On that day, I would love to be sitting in your audience, listening to your stories, and learning from your experience. I look forward to that day.